we will take a uh, another question <clears throat> from brother from Tarak from Oman. He's asking about okay, he has a friend he wants to invite to Islam, which I think we all want to do. <laughs> he's asking what is the best way to go about it without making his friend angry and without putting too much pressure on him. Uh, I believe the viewers by now have already memorized the upcoming answer, which is be a good role model, be on time, be organized, uh, have a system in your life, be clean, smell good, look good. Right. You will impress that person, and he will definitely inquire, why is that? Because my religion teaches me stuff. It teaches me honesty. That is before saying a word, before right. saying a word. I bet you this person would be interested to ask you, when you take off during your break to go to pray, then you come back immediately to work without wasting any further time. When you take Friday off and you're very keen to pray on, uh, on time, any person, any non-Muslim following any religion would be interested to ask why. Why those people are so committed to their religion? There has to be something in their life that's making their life very happy, organized, right. be making them very honest people. Then. <coughs> After setting their own model, the most important thing you need to debate, negotiate, explain to your friend is the fact of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. That is the most important thing. People, un unfortunately, they take side roles. They start talking about the importance of praying five times a day. Right. But to whom? Right. Right. You know, if you just talk about the prayer or fasting during Ramadan, it's very hard for people to imagine that. I was just sitting with uh, a person who's agnostic. He's British, and I was talking to him about things like that. People have been addressing him about the importance of fasting, about praying, about... He says, I cannot imagine doing all of that. That's why I confirm that practice comes second, later on. Faith comes first. Right. When you love, you do whatever you can. You do your utmost to please your beloved one. Imagine been, uh, loving Allah the Almighty, trying to please Him, trying to enter His paradise, trying to join His prophets in heaven, yeah. would make you do anything possible. And whatever Allah commanded is very affordable, but only for the believers. So that's why the order, be in our own mother, be honest yourself, right. do not tell a lie, be, look clean, smell good, pray on time, then uh, exchange gifts. Okay. Tahadu, tahabu. The right. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Exchange gifts that will create and will develop love. Invite him over. Then, if this person opens a conversation, it's not a debate. It's not about who's going to hell and who's going to fire, right. and who's going to uh, to heaven. It's about explaining to this person first. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, we have the methodology of da'wah have been explained in details in the doctrine of the Quran and in the Sahih and Sunnah." The Prophet ﷺ delegated Mu'az to Al-Yaman and said that you're going to meet people who are the people of the book, right. mainly Jews and Christians. Inform them, أخبرهم, Allah ilaha illallah. Inform them about the oneness of Allah and about me that I'm the last messenger of God. If they respond to that, in a sense, if they accept this fact, right. then tell them that Allah has ordained upon them five daily prayers. If they're happy with that, tell them about the zakat. Tell them about fasting, one step at a time. Right. But when you shove it down your throat and mm -hmm. you make it very heavy, uh, they would not think about the oneness of Allah. Rather, they would think about it's a very difficult and impossible task to fulfill, and they would be even reluctant to think logically about the oneness of Allah. And Allah knows best. Thank you, Sheikh.